Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the for the kind invitation. I'm really glad to to participate, even though it's it's on Zoom. So we hope to meet uh, uh, soon. But it's a pleasure to 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 join in this talk. So I will uh, discuss uh, work I've been doing uh, with, in the field of uh, time crystals and in particular i will uh, try to uh, highlight possible connections with another phenomenon which is called quantum synchronization so now this is a work that uh, i've been doing with people in trieste uh, and in collaboration with uh, jonathan killing in st andrews and marcos Quiro. Uh, um, and Horatio Scarlatella in France. So let me stress that, uh, so then I will talk about this essentially about, so I will give a, just a gen general introduction to the field, but I will, then I will mostly mention uh, these two first paper that uh, I mentioned here, but let me say that uh, more recently, I'm, I've been continuing to work on this field and uh, together with Stefano Ruffo of CISA and uh, uh, PhD student Rehane Casse, we did uh, some work on classical synchronization. And uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago with uh, Michal Adyushek, uh, Sai Vincian Mampati and the student Pavel Solanki, uh, then uh, we um, also found uh, some interesting connection between, uh, so how to, what we call the seeding time crystal, but I will have no time to discuss about this, uh, this works here. So let me start by uh, saying, uh, so by introducing uh, the um, idea of uh, time crystal. So, and uh, before doing this, uh, I would like to, uh, to just to recall a uh, few things about spontaneous symmetry breaking, which are, uh, we, we all know, but just to set the stage. Just imagine that you have a quantum system. It's a quantum system. It's just it's a lattice system of spins. Now, uh, they interact through some exchange term, which is the first one proportional to J, but there is also some transfer state. So since the different components of the spins do not commute, even at zero temperature, the, a phase transition can occur. And this phase transition will depend on the ratio of the exchange coupling with the, with the uh, transfer field. And uh, we will have uh, um, at values of this, coupling cost, a reduced coupling cost in G, there will be a finite magnetization, say the, the order parameter, which will vanish with the characteristic, say, power law behavior at the critical value. Now, below this, uh, uh, below this coupling, so I, I think this is wrong. This should be H over J, okay? Sorry, it's, it's just uh, a small, uh, mistake. Below this coupling, then uh, the fact that uh, the order parameter is different from zero uh, is intimately connected to the fact that the ground state breaks spontaneously one of the symmetry of the Hamiltonian. In this particular case, it's Z2 symmetry. Uh, now, we all know that spontaneously, uh, spontaneous breaking of symmetry occurs in the most wide uh, areas of science from, I mean, if you think to physics, it, uh, it occurs at any energy scale, okay? It just occurs from uh, in condensed matter in high energy, whatever. And 
depending on the uh, type of symmetry which, uh, which is broken, then correspondingly that there will be some ordering associated. Now, 10 years ago, actually in 2012, Vilcek uh, published um, a series of papers in which he asked himself, oh, out of this many, many different uh, symmetries, which are spontaneously broken in, in, uh, in nature, apparently time translational symmetry has never been observed to be broken. Is it possible to have uh, such, uh, such uh, a case? If this is the case, then Vilcek said, okay, so the state of matter that will be uh, achieved will be time crystal. So the idea of time crystal, you can, uh, people thought, originally to be analogous to ordinary crystals. So you have a solid, you have a solid described by atoms interacting, ions, electrons. And if you have uh, <clears throat> uh, your Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian is translational uh, invariant. However, when uh, you get the solid, this means that the, the state of the solid breaks spontaneously space transition environment. So in analogy with this uh, crystalline behavior in space, then Vilcek said that if time translational invariance is broken, then why should find time crystal? Now, at the beginning, it was not clear if Time crystalline phase, which was never observed, could be uh, a possibility. Now, in principle, people now we know, but at the beginning when Vilcek started working on, on these ideas, it was not even clear if the laws of nature would allow for uh, a time crystalline phase if for uh, some reasons, this is the case. And um, sorry, I, I see that there are something on the chat, but I'm, I'm not, uh, okay. So if there are questions, let me know because I don't have, it's complicated for me to just have a look at the chat. So if, for some reasons, then it turns out that time crystals are uh, allowed by, by nature, then still there is the question is how to define a time crystal. And why it was not observed. So is there a reason, uh, if there is a reason why this has not been observed until a uh, few years ago, and where to look for it. All these questions are, uh, can be answered in a positive way. And soon after the, uh, the initial proposals by Vilcek, only a few years after, then there were experiments that confirmed uh, the existence of time crystal. And these experiments done with quantum simulators are interesting both because they show that not only time crystal exists, but also that since this time crystal, I will try to explain uh, in a second, uh, are very fragile state of matter, then one should find special systems uh, to observe them. 
I will try to conclude my presentation, trying to find connections to other phenomena. I have time to discuss possible application of time crystals. So I will for sure cover the introduction time crystal and quantum synchronization. I'm not sure I will have time to talk about finite frequency uh, criticality. So the outline of my presentation will be as follows. First, I will give a very brief introduction to time crystal, but trying to emphasize what are the main properties. Then I will move to uh, the case in which time crystals uh, appear in dissipative systems. Uh, and this is interesting because there is uh, a connection between uh, dissipative time crystals, many body limit cycle quantum synchronization. Uh, I will try to comment on possible realizations in system with coupled cavities. I'm not sure I can say much about finite frequency criticality because I think probably this will take me too far away. And uh, it is not, uh, may, may not work within time constraints. So first of all, let's define a time crystal. Now, at the beginning, uh, even the definition of time crystal was a bit confusing. It was not really clear how to characterize time crystal in phase. Uh, a big uh, contribution to this, um, to, to make this clear, was done by this work in 2015 by Watanabe and Oshikawa that said, okay, let's try to define it this way. <clears throat> let's call phi just a local order parameter. For instance, it can be magnetizations. If you want to keep a simple example with, uh, uh, with spin system, then phi is just a local magnetization. Then the idea to define a time crystal is just to use the same definition that we use for uh, long range order. That is in long range order, you take correlators, you just take this correlator to uh, the two points of the correlator to be very large and the average of the correlator will be just given by the product of the averages. So if the correlator at long space, at large distances, sorry, goes to a constant, then this means that the magnetization is different from zero. Now you can use the same idea, but then if it's a time crystal, then it, this means that by pushing this to very large distances, instead of getting a constant, you get something which is time dependent, which is oscillating. It's a very reasonable <clears throat> definition. And uh, what was the main contribution of uh, Watanabe and Oshikawa was to prove that uh, if you accept this definition, then if you go to the, to the ground state or in thermal equilibrium, then time crystals do not exist. This was very, very important result because first of all, it just tells that this analogy between space crystals and time crystals is not really um, well-defined because Space crystal solids are defined in equilibrium, in thermal equilibrium, or even at zero temperature, while time crystal cannot exist in equilibrium. So what does it mean? 
it means that if a time crystal might exist, the only place where this can be realized is in out of equilibrium situations. Here there was an additional breakthrough just after one year in 2016, there were two papers that thought to uh, the simplest, probably the simplest way to uh, generate a non-equilibrium uh, situation where it could be possible to observe time crystals. These two papers, first, it was theory by, uh, here, I show you these two papers by Elze, Bauer, and Nayak, and uh, by Keman uh, et al, that consider uh, time periodic Hamiltonian. So that's why these <clears throat> regimes were dubbed discrete, oh, sorry, floquet time crystals. So the idea is very simple. You just take uh, an Hamiltonian of a quantum system and you just drive it periodically. So such that after a given period, then you get the same Hamiltonian. Then you look for uh, <clears throat> the properties, some observables, and if these observables will evolve in the thermodynamic limits with a period which is a multiple of the period of the Hamiltonian, then uh, <coughs> uh, likely you are in a time crystal phase. Now, there are several things which are important uh, and um, actually I've, I mean, one should care. So in principle, one can find cases in which by fine tuning the Hamiltonian and the initial state, then one can get this doubling or multiplying of the period. It is crucial to define a proper phase that the system is rigid in the sense that space should be a phase not depending on some of any fine tuning. And most important, this uh, doubling, for example, of the period should not be uh, appearing only for a finite number but should persist in, for infinite long time in the thermodynamic limit. Now, uh, okay, sorry. After the theory paper, then so and actually the theory papers, these two theory papers pointed out something which was very important. That is, if you drive uh, the Hamiltonian in a periodic way, then you are just feeding energy into the system. So in a generic situation, then essentially you heat up the Hamiltonian, the, sorry, the system, and let's say in the in a thermal picture, then you will go to ideally to infinite temperature. And so there is no hope to, to see a time crystal in behavior. But the two papers pointed out that if on the other side, you have mechanism to break ergodicity and they discuss uh, one example like they consider uh, a system being in a many body localized phase, then you may avoid uh, this heating up and you may enter a 
phase of uh, uh, time crystalline phase. Now, without going into much, oh, sorry, details, these two experiments, which appeared only a couple of years later after the, uh, after the, sorry, one year later after the experiment, um, essentially realized with quantum simulators using, using either ion, trapped ions or Hilbert atoms, they really implemented the, um, the system that was discussed in the theory paper. And they saw that, uh, so it's here without going in any details, that they thought that period doubling would emerge. Now, let me stress that these are systems which were especially designed. And this is an interesting point to stress. So at the beginning of quantum simulation, people thought that quantum simulators, and they are indeed, this is indeed the case, quantum simulations are good to simulate quantum systems, as, you know, as the word, as the, the word says. But here, I would like to stress an aspect of quantum simulation, which is new and is particularly interesting. So sometimes a quantum simulator is something that it's an artificial quantum system that you can control and it allows realize states which are in principle allowed by the laws of nature but they nevertheless are essentially very difficult or impossible to observe naturally because they are very fragile. One, for instance, one question that people asked soon after this works was uh, the question of uh, decoupling to an external bar. So in this floquet time crystals, then if you couple the system to an external bus, you probably destroy um, the time crystal in itself. But this may not be always the case. So what we are go I'm going to show you is that if you take an open system, then uh, sometimes in the steady state, in instead of reaching a fixed point, a steady state, you may enter a limit cycle, a many body limit cycle. And this uh, can be interpreted as a time crystals. I will not comment on the boundary phase because uh, it's not relevant now. Now, you may ask uh, if this is uh, compliance with no go theorem. Yes, because in general, these steady states are non equilibrium states. So we do not follow the no-go theorem that I mentioned at the beginning. Now, the last point I would like to mention is that this limit cycle can be understood as a way of realizing synchronized dynamics in a quantum, quantum many body system. Now, I will try to convey the main idea uh, main ideas by considering a very simple idealized model. And then I will discuss possible realizations that of course require uh, a much more complicated analysis. Now, the idea of um, 
exploring uh, <clears throat> time crystals in dissipative system has uh, involved many, many groups. And here, this is just uh, a list of, uh, a partial uh, list of reference. And uh, um, there are several different um, experimental realization. I will start with some idealized model, okay? So the idea is that if you have a dissipative system, then the state of the system will be described by a density matrix, rho B. The B is not really important, but just the rho. And uh, it will obey some Lindblad equation, okay? Where this L are just uh, a set of Lindblad operators. Now, when is it possible to, to have a time crystal? Uh, let me um, discuss this by a simple case, which can be easily, not easily, but which can be solvable and uh, just to illustrate the idea. So it's very simple and idealized situation. So you have an Hamiltonian, of a collection of spins, independent spins, with, uh, with the splitting omega zero, which however, are collectively coupled to a bus, to a single bus. So if you define these collective variables, capital S, then the, <coughs> the Lindblad equation will have the unitary part, which is just uh, rotation, and then you have this coupling in which you have a collective decay. So this is important. So the collective behavior uh, is, uh, will be responsible for um, the non-trivial dynamics. And uh, so it is good to, to define the coupling denormalized by the, <coughs> the size of this uh, total spin so that the two terms have the same uh, magnitude. So here, the limit, the thermodynamic limit will be achieved uh, in the limit S going to infinity. Now, this model has been studied a couple of years ago. So actually the preprint was, I think a few, Few, few years earlier, and it shows two phases. So one phase in which sigma z is different from zero and another phase in which sigma z is equal to zero. And the two phases de depend on the ratio of the splitting with the dumping rate kappa. So if the splitting is larger or smaller then uh, essentially you may have different phases. Detail to understand their dynamical properties. And in order to do this, then it is uh, very useful to have a look at the spectrum of the living blood operator. Now, I'll show you the two cases so that you can see the difference. So these are, so the Lindblad, so, so the Lindblad equation is linear. So you can have a look at the, the corresponding eigenvalues. All the re real part is always negative. So there will be one point which, in which the real part is zero. So this is for finite system which is the steady state, then there will be uh, all eigenvalues with negative real part and some imaginary part. Now look at the two different cases between uh, the region in which omega zero over kappa is larger or smaller than one. Then in one case, this is gapped, okay? 
So sorry, it's the other way around. So it should be, so the two things are inverted, sorry. Uh, so here is gut, while here, you see that the spectrum becomes gapless, okay? So you will have <clears throat> a number of uh, eigenvalues, which will approach real part zero when the system grows. So the fact that the limb blood spectrum has different properties will have an impact on the dynamics. And this is what I would like to stress. What is important is not only to study the steady state, but to study the dynamics. So if you look at more carefully at the system, uh, side scaling of the various eigenvalues, then you see that there is a bunch of eigenvalues that you see that we have a <clears throat> real part which goes to zero when the system goes to the thermodynamic limit. Now, in this particular model, you see that actually the, the eigenvalues of the Lindblad operators are organized in just uh, kind of groups, which are separated by the gap, a gap. So I don't think this is important. The key point is that this is a model in which when you approach the steady, uh, the thermodynamic limit, the there is no single point, but there is a subset of eigenvalue with real part equal zero. Let's see what are the implications on the dynamics. So this is an example of what I mean. So just take the average value of the spin as a function of time for a given set of system sizes let's say, just take the blue curve, 40 spins. Then you see that there are oscillations which are damped and the system will reach a steady state. In this case, sigma z should be equal to zero. Now, if you go, this is the interesting point. If you go to a larger system site, then you will see that the oscillations are there and they will be damped slower. So they will go to zero on a time scale, which will increase with the system size. And actually, if you solve the thermodynamic limit, this, is, this model is sufficiently simple to be solved, then you will see that this oscillation do proceed forever. So you can do um, much uh, more detailed uh, analysis, and then you will see that of this pattern, and then you will see that the decay rate of the oscillation, in this particular case, goes to zero like one over s. So you have a situation in which, in the term of limit, the steady state breaks time translational invariant. And this is a many body effect, okay? So this is a, a period which is emerging out of spontaneous symmetry breaking. I will skip this discussion because it is uh, a bit confusing. Uh, what I told you, before uh, was a very simple model. And uh, I think just looking at this simple model was useful because um, it, give, it gives an idea of how things may, uh, this phenomenon can, can, uh, may emerge, but it would be very much important to find actual physical systems where this can be observed. Well, <clears throat> of course, uh, if you go to physical system, then the analysis is much more complicated. And uh, 
it is plugged by approximation. So one can discuss if, uh, you know, what you see, it depends on the approximation or this uh, genuine effect. I mean, we are talking about really a kind of fragile situations or even making uh, some approximation may, be, uh, may alter the, the, the physics. However, there are a number of systems where this type of dynamics in an approximate way, it is seen. One example is for example, for, uh, for instance, cavity arrays. So essentially you want many body dissipative systems. So in which you have some dissipation, some unitary dynamics, now, this system here, so in which you have cavity QEDs in which photons can hop from side to side, uh, cannot be solved nicely um, as I showed you before, but then there are very crude approximation that should be inserted. Mostly uh, all this work has used main field. And in main field, you see that this oscillation will appear, but I would say we should um, really um, understand uh, to which extent uh, uh, these spaces are robust. But the idea is that essentially there are regions in which you observe a uh, region of the parameter space in which you observe uh, um, oscillation in the order parameter as a function of time in the steady state. So for instance, in the case of cavity arrays or optomechanical arrays, one should have some bosonic field and the coherence will oscillate in time. But what does it mean this? So just imagine that you have that your array in, has the events which will oscillate in time. It means that there will be a dynamical locking of the phase uh, through all the array. Uh, but this is nothing else than phase synchronization. Phase synchronization taking place in a quantum many body system. And uh, this is somewhat related to um, the same thing that uh, was studied, for instance, in, uh, in classical synchronization in classical dynamical system has been studied uh, many, many, for many, many years. And for instance, we have this Kuramoto-like dynamics in which you have rotors which are interacting and they spontaneously synchronize. Uh, this is a kind of uh, Kuramoto-like dynamics, but in a quantum setting. Um, I think I would like to skip uh, this and just, um, go to the, um, just to the conclusion, uh, so that we can, uh, so, sorry, let, let me discuss uh, just in more, de a little bit more details, not the, uh, this works, but just the idea of this cavity arrays. This cavity arrays so essentially are just QED cavities realized in optics or in, uh, <clears throat> in circuit QED in which you have some nonlinearity because inside the cavity it's um, that there are two level system or few level system. Now, uh, the steady state is reached because there will be some decay of photons or decay of, uh, of the two level system relaxation. But then on the other side, you just pump the system with some external radiation. Then uh, the steady state will be achieved by complex interplay of these losses. 
the pumping and the internal dynamics. So hopefully these are very promising systems to observe such a phenomena as well as others. I mean, uh, sometimes this and other system of the kind of this kind are called uh, many body, uh, sorry, uh, are called uh, quantum, open quantum simulators because are uh, uh, able of simulating many body open dynamics. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude. I would just introduce time crystals in uh, a dissipative setting. And um, I just discuss in some details a simple example, which I think it's, it's useful because it captures the main ingredient of how a time crystal in a dissipative setting can develop, uh, but it would be very, very important to make, uh, to have detailed prediction on, uh, on um, system which are relevant for experiments. And uh, in the last part, I mentioned that there's macros Microscopic periodic dynamic uh, the periodic dynamic of microscopic observables uh, is a way for uh, a system for a quantum system to synchronize and synchronization um, is interesting and may be interesting for quantum technologies because synchronization is a way in which a system can stabilize. Um, for instance, kind of well correlated motion. So it's, for instance, if you have a synchronized system of rotors and you just perturb locally, this perturbation will be um, corrected. So it might be an interesting uh, avenue to explore quantum synchronization for self corrections or this other. Things. So let me mention, for instance, we were trying to do, we did a work on uh, connection of time crystals uh, to be used in uh, heat engine. And are, uh, so there are several possible uh, interesting applications of uh, time crystal in phase in quantum technological application. And with this, I will like to thank you for the invitation, for the attention, and, and uh, so I'm happy to answer uh, to yes. questions. Th th thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Professor, for this nice, very nice presentation. And uh, now we pass the question. We will we will start with the with, with uh, the question posted on the chat room by by I think uh, uh, those many uh, yes you can you can read ah yes I'm reading the, yes, so yes, does yes. the many body persistent oscillation depend on initial condition uh, so the answer so for the floquet time crystal no now for for the dissipative time crystals. In general, no. Sometimes there are some models uh, in which there are additional uh, integrals of motion that may fix some constraint. But in general, the result, the steady state, should not depend on the, the initial condition. Actually, it's important. Otherwise, it will look like a fine-tuned phenomenon. So, so if 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 if, uh, if the time crystal doesn't depend on the initial state, so it is independent of the entanglement also in the system. So, so this is can, so can help. I, I think uh, so. This the the relation between uh, entanglement and time crystals. I don't think it's a well uh, understood phenomenon so far. So. Entanglement should play a role in unitary evolution of uh, floquet time crystals. In the dissipative case, uh, this is not, not 
known. For instance, similar discussion have been uh, done for what is the relation of entanglement in quantum synchronization. And there are some models in which uh, it is seen that entanglement plays a role, but it is not always the case. So I think it's still an open question. If, uh, excuse me, Prof. Uh, even we, we, have, we have competition between coherent and uh, dissipative effects. So yes, so there is coherence. So the, uh, you correctly <laughs> said yeah. it's competition, but let's say, and there will be entanglement in the steady state, but I don't, so I, I'm not sure that entanglement is the key element or, uh, and if time crystal may, ob, may um, so for instance, there are time crystals which exist also in classical systems. Okay. So, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, another question, if you have to compare with synchronization between classical system digital and quantum one, how about the accuracy of each system? So this is also another, uh, so strange enough, for, for some reasons, uh, time, quantum times, Time, quantum time crystal have been studied much more in more details than classical time crystals. I think there are only very few work on uh, classical time crystals. And uh, I think that the mechanism, so in both cases, I think uh, the existence of time crystals should be somewhat associated to the breaking of uh, the ergodic behavior. So the system should not have an ergodic behavior. Now, uh, uh, this breaking of ergodicity may occur for different reasons. So there is no obvious connection. So in some cases, the mechanism that lead to a time, classical time crystal might be different from those of the quantum case. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, another question, please. If... Any other question for, for Professor Fazio? May I speak? Yes, yes, please. What? Yes. Yes, because if I type, it's probably too long. So um, my question is, um, I'm still trying to understand the independence of initial condition in dissipative time crystal. So I imagine the oscillation is coming from the like near, like pure imaginary eigenvalues of the Lovellian. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I thought that it would still be dependent on the initial condition because the equation is inherently linear. Yes. So it is, it, it depends on the initial condition or it does So depend. yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I don't have, uh, so let me say the following. In the model I presented, uh, they, even if it's dissipative, then we found out that there is an integral of motion. So there is a quantity which is conserved through the evolution which means that there are certain information of the initial state that are preserved through all till the steady state. So there is no specific dependence on the initial state, but uh, if there is, in this case, there is a conserved quantity, then you know, there, there is a quantity which is conserved, okay? Okay, thank you. Now, so something what I want to say is that I, I don't know if all the examples of dissipative time crystal have any, some kind of integrals of motion in their equation or not. This I don't know. So in the example, I know this is the case, but I'm not sure if this is, it's a, a general requirement or is just by chance that we saw this. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, any other question? Uh, I, I have another question, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how time Krista we have in a, a grand canonical ensemble? So you see that uh, this example of, uh, so the experimental example I mentioned of cavity rays are in a sense grand canonical because photons are not conserved. So you have pumps and probes. So the, you cannot define a chemical potential because you are out of equilibrium, but number is not conserved. Okay, thank you. So thank actually you. those are examples in, in this case. And, uh, uh, I, I ask young people to, to ask Professor Fazio. It is a good opportunity, an excellent opportunity for them to interact with the, with the, an expert in, 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 in this topic. Abdullah, do you have any question for Professor? So waiting for other... Uh, uh, professor, uh, please, uh, uh, can... Can you, uh, can, you, uh, can you tell us if there, there is a possibility to combine uh, time symmetry breaking and space time breaking? So and, uh, the, the answer is yes. yes. Yes, the answer is yes. I don't think that there is. A... So in general, you can always, so you can combine time translational symmetry breaking with another type of spontaneous symmetry breaking. This can be space. And in this case, you may have space time crystals. I think that there are papers, a couple of papers on this, but you, are, you can also combine this with other type of symmetry breaking. And then you have more complex situation, but it, this is indeed the case, yes. And the, uh, the, the, the recent uh, uh, experimental results, mm -hmm. do, do you think that uh, will, 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 will modify in some source uh, our understanding, uh, understanding of the time? Uh, yeah, no, no, I think one should, so what I think it might be um, relevant in the future is to understand how this time crystal may have an impact in the definition of clocks. So, but this is still open. There are no papers, no works on this. So a, a very important point is to try to see if uh, time crystal can be used to define clocks. And so in this sense, in this direction, this goes in what you suggest to, to understand how to measure time. Yes. And, uh, and uh, can, can, can we speak in the future about quantum time, quantization of time? Uh, no, this <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Thank, thank you very much. And, uh, in, in, a recent, uh, in a, a, a recent paper, uh, you wrote, Professor, uh, you, 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 you discussed the idea of uh, uh, seeding crystallization. Uh, yes, uh, I had no time to discuss this. So okay. this is uh, something that I've been working. So I should say this is most, so this is the work uh, of Michal and, uh, and Sai, that, that it's their idea. Which is, so essentially it's a kind of proximity. The idea is that if you have a time crystal and you have something which is featureless and you put in contact, then you can, in, you can induce. It's like having, you put a seed of a crystal and then the crystal grows. And also here you have a time crystal, you put it in contact with something which is not in a crystalline phase. And then the time crystal will will form a seed that will become larger and larger. Yeah, this is, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, any other question, please? Uh, I have another question. Yes, so fair, yes, please, please. Yes, so uh, the, this, this question is about flocket and crystal. 
So as far as I understand, um, there's a lot of parallels between time crystal with the classical limit cycle. So for example, in the classical limit cycle, uh, like a bundled clock, we have a balance between energy gain and energy loss. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to understand how this, this energy balance in uh, the, the kind of flock K time crystal appear. So there is no, so essentially there is no, so let me say, in general, since it's a closed system, if you pump energy, there is no balance, okay? And in fact, the flocata and crystal are kind of fragile because the only way in which you can uh, realize a crystal is just to have a system which is not able to absorb energy because it's a closed system. So as you say, there is no balance. You cannot disperse energy by other, other methods. If you have a unit, it's a closed system. Uh, so the only way you can do is just to find a way in which even if you pump energy, the system is unable to absorb. That's why people use MBL. Because if you take a disordered many body system, then uh, because the energy levels have no, I mean, uh, have no good structure, then they're unable to absorb energy. So this is the, so it's not the question of balance, but is the uh, inability of the system to reach a thermal state. So if you take a closed system, which thermalize in the presence of uh, AC driving, the only thermalization point is infinite temperature because the system will keep absorbing energy without dispersing it. So essentially the role of the driving there is just to push the system out of equilibrium, but it doesn't yes. give yes. any energy. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah, thank you. Oh, there is another question. What is, will be the benefit of time crystal on thermal machine? So I don't know if there is a, a benefit, but it's say if you have something like a working substance, which creates a, a well-defined cycle, this may be, may, may create a kind of well-defined resonant path to transfer energy between reservoir uh, in such a way like super radiance or something like, like this so that each cycle then uh, energy will is transferred from hot to I, I don't know or in a refrigerator from cold to hot in an efficient way but yeah this this might be the an advantage Okay, th th thank you, Professor. Uh, I think this the, the, uh, your your answer uh, uh, answered also to to the question by Zachary Debbie. Yeah, yeah, I read it on the chat. Yes. 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 What will be the finish of the crystal? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any any other question? Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, Mustafa. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof, for this presentation, and thank uh, for uh, thank Professor Dawood and Salawi for and all of member of uh, Moroccan uh, network of quantum information. Uh, my quant my question is: uh, there is some uh, relation between the time crystal and quantum Holyfield. Thank you. And and uh, quantum, quantum Holyfield. Um. No, because um, so in the quantum all effect, uh, I think you, you have a topological structure. And uh, so you, you may have edge current things like that. So time crystal, so you may have topological time crystals, but uh, no, in general, no, it's the different type of uh, emerging phase. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mustafa. Thank you, Professor Forens. Uh, other question, please. So, uh, so to, to to close to close this uh, this uh, this uh, meeting, uh, I would like Professor the final my final question. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, can you briefly briefly mention some some some. Uh, some direction direction of the, of the, of the research uh, on this on this topic in the future so, uh, so so something which is still open is to understand possible application of time crystals in quantum 
and quantum technologies. So, so that there are, uh, for instance, interest. So there are connection between time crystals and uh, what so um, what they call as uh, uh, so sorry. I, I don't remember the name, but it's just uh, zero decoherent subspace. So you have subspace which are protected uh, by decoherence or in principle connection of time crystal with cor error corrections or how to use the device like heat engine or similar things. This is still open or clocks. So all these are, uh, I think, are open questions. If, if I understand, so, so, uh, uh, you, the, the, it seems that there, the, there is a, some, connect, some connection between symmetry resolved dynamical purification and, and time crystallization. Uh, poss possibly. I mean, this is not, I mean, I think it's a possible uh, direction, but this is not, uh, this has not been. Uh, investigated so far. So I think one should understand, but I think it's a promising direction, yes. Okay, that, 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 thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Okay. Professor thank you very for, much for, for, thank you for, for this, uh, this presentation and uh, uh, hope to see you soon in person here in Morocco. Yeah, sure, <laughs> or in Trieste. Or in Trieste, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for uh, for okay. the time. Your, your, uh, despite your busy schedule, thank you very no, much. No, it was friends. a pleasure. Bye bye. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank all the participants for uh, joining us uh, to to this meeting uh, organized by Moroccan Network of Quantum Information. Thank you very much. And bye bye. Until yeah. next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. All the people. <laughs>